Welcome everybody to another edition of WCW 2004 here in TW2020 as it's time for the go-home show for WCW Showdown in the Sun. As you start out with our pre-show match, as any pre-show match that terrible wrestling and nauseous and crowd heat air pairs, Tichiri and Fitly defeated Cash and the Rebel Legionnaires, uh, Spoonger Pompinius and Romeo Lavernius. When Air Paris pins Swinger with a diamond leg drop, this gets a 62. Uh, Finley gets a 46 because he's getting old. Sheer gets a 65. Air Paris gets a 75. Swinger gets a 39. Romeo gets a 43. And Cash gets a 65. Not the worst match, not the best match either. Uh, but yeah, just, you know, just match to get some PV time for some entering time for people. Now we're on to the actual main show. I always start out with. Basically, um, Eddie Guerrero coming out. You know, he basically starts the show. He's glad to have support of the fans, and he's even happier. Then this, this Sunday, at Shonen Sun, he gets to prove once and for all why he's a world champion by defeating him here right in the middle of that ring in Mexico in front of some great Mexican fans, just with the great fans here. And he's going to show that Guerrero family values trump all, especially with Travo tonight when they take on Vampiro Lestat. The stat comes down. I mean, Vampiro comes down, you know, with this stat. He basically says, you know, the clock is ticking on your title round. The only reason your champion was is a fluke because we were not ready for you. But now that we are, Guerrero, this title belt is coming back to Deadpool one way or the other. And Eddie's like, well, you know, I was thinking, I say, you know, you used to be the guy in charge here. You'd be a whoop ass, you know, you, you took out Goldberg, hell, you took out lots of people. But what I've noticed in the past couple of months is, do you actually wear the pants in your own stable anymore? Because, you know, me and Travo, like, Travo knows I'm the world champion. You know, he has a lot to learn from his Uncle Eddie, but it seems that your balls are on Morningstar's desk in a jar right now, because you do whatever he says. And, you know, no, he knows the message, and he knows what we need to do, take men like you out and put us back in charge. So why didn't message worry about you, pal? Come on, are you some sort of lapdog or are you actually a man? Say what you about other people in this company, like Canyon, or even some asshole like Helms. They at least got their own code and their own thing. Well, you're just somebody. You're just Morningstar's bitch. Then comes the brawl, and the BC Shield's breaking them apart, and some heat built up for the main event tonight, and the big main event, and this gets a 94, which is actually a lot better than what I thought it would do. Like, because, again, Eddie's had his problems getting over, unfortunately, but there we go. This might actually do something. Then we have a Big Pop as Usual Thunder Liger makes his return to WCW. Uh, okay, well, that's unfortunate. Uh, this gets a 53, and then for Liger's actual debut match, he defeats Laparka in 916 by pinball the Liger Bomb. This gets a 62, uh, Liger gets a 69, Laparka gets a 43. And as a side note, I sort of realized as I like was finished booking everything that I could have put Liger's off debut off for a month and just done uh, Noble versus Laparka in Mexico, because Laparka's really over in Mexico. But I figured it's something else for Laparka to do at Showdown in the Sun. But, you know, not the end of the world anyway. So, perfectly solid debut match uh, for Liger as this gets a 62. And then post-match, of course, Noble and Emmy try to run in, but they eat some Shotes, also known as Palm Strikes for All, as, you know, he just wallops Noble with one, knocks him out of the ring, and he even knocks Able one. That actually, you know, it makes him step back enough that Liger's able to have a big drop kick and then a dive on both of them to the cheers of the crowd. And this gets a 53 as we build up the Cruiserweight title match. Uh, then we see a quick, like, little, like, one, like, not even, it says a one-minute segment, but really it's, like, a five-second segment, as we see Kaz seen leaving the Helms Legacy locker room. Why do we know it's the Helms Legacy locker room? Because we have a big old sign that says Helms, of Helms Legacy logo on it, and this gets 67. And then we go backstage where uh, RVD enters Booker's locker room, and he basically says, you know, uh, you know, hey, bro, I, I talked to Eric, and, well, I got a really great idea, but I just need your okay. Uh, Sharma Hood steps in and says, look. I understand that you're friends, but me and Booker, we're working together now, and Booker you know, says, no, no, I understand, but RVD's my friend, and so let's hear him out. Okay, so RVD like, says, two words, seven letters, bro. Tag team. I've got a background back in tag team wrestling. Of course, you're awesome with the world tag team title reigns. And right now, Air Raid are too banged up for a rematch. Nobody else has got enough wins, so I talked to Eric, and as long as we agree to team up, we can get the tag title shot. At, at the pay-per-view. Booker's like, we never teamed before, though. But he's like, don't. I mean, well, we've teamed a couple times, but not officially, but come on. We're both great wrestlers. What's the problem? Booker's like, look over Shamar. Shamar sort of nods. Booker's like, fine, I'm in. And they shake hands, and there you go. 
Uh, this gets to 76 and good stuff. And we go in the ring. We're about to subpar wrestling. Now says Proud Heat, Gail Kim, and Lexi James, otherwise known as Lexi Two Top Heels of the Women's Division, for the moment anyway, defeat WCW Women's World Champion Sleen Cartier and Jordan Cole when 753 when Gail Kim pinned Sleen Cartier. Says using Rupture Leverage, but let's be honest, she used the world title belt. She walks Sleen with it, gets the pinfall victory over the world. Women's World Champion. This gets a 63. Cole gets a 56. Cartier gets a 64, because damn, she's getting over. Lexi gets a 51. Gail Kim gets a 58. And then, oh, Selene and, okay, so basically all our blonde baby faces have good chemistry teaming together. That's, oh, no, no, this is the theme that I've done before, right? Okay. I read it. It's Angel, right? Okay, yeah. Anyway, this gets 60, which is actually better than I expected. And then post match, you know, game basically points and makes the teleport motions at Selene, and this gets a 64. And then we cut backstage, we're booking RVD arc, you know, backstage doing backstage wrestling things. And he, you know, Harrison's sort of like, whoa, 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 whoa. We talked to Eric, and he agreed with us that you need to earn a tight title shot. So get your ass to the ring in a little bit here and take us on and we'll whoop your ass because we're the actual tag team and the former tag team champions and the real best tag team of 2003. And then if we're done whooping your ass, we'll take the title off the triumph. Booker RVD says, well, Saka, you got another thing coming. This gets a 74, perfectly solid stuff. Uh, then we go backstage where Bor Borash is with Shane Helms and the rest of the Helms um, Legacy. As you know, he basically starts by saying, saying, Reminder, that not only has your superstar has arrived, but after Shadow and the Sun, not only will be the greatest US champion of all time, but I'll be the next WZW world champion waiting, whoever happens to be warming that belt for me at Strip of Brawl. And he's not worried about the six other five other men in that ring because why would he be he's the greatest US champion who he has to face some overgrown muscle head uh, a guy who's too scary for his own good a guy who's holding stable isn't even in, in check like i've got my great tag taking me check i look at cash and amber all over each other and you know looking at like reno the reality is i'm the greatest wrestler in, in, in world championship wrestling nobody else just isn't aware of that yet. He walks away, and 70, perfectly solid promo. Little worse than usual, but you know, bad roll, what can you do? Then we have a really good match. I mean, this is actually an awesome match. Like a shockingly good match. As in a bout that great wrestling, good heat, Booker T and RVD defeated American Smith Bonded in 1301 when RVD pinned Chris Harris with the five star park splash. This gets an 82, RVD gets a 93, Booker T gets an 85, Chris Harris gets a 70, James Storm gets a 73. Um, so yeah, really good match, um, and just Booker and RVD, you know, do their Booker and RVD, because they were a tag team in real life, so they do their stuff they did in like 2005, I think it was in WWE, and at the end, Booker hits the book and RVD goes up top, hits the five-star fart clash, and gets the win, and sets that match for Showdown in the Sun. So we got that, as it's Billy Kidman, Night Storm, Booker T, RVD, Roll tag team titles on the line. And then post match, of course, the triumphant run in to basically, you know, do a little take out uh, on uh, Booker and RVD, but out comes Scott Steiner to make the save. Well, not really make the save, but more like just brawl with awesome. And there we go. We just, you know, wild brawl. This gets an 89, and everybody is happy about that. And just, you know, just a huge brawl, you know, Booker RD fighting with Storm and Kidman. And we even get a quick cat fight between Charmel and April, because why not? But the main thing is Steiner and also brawling to the back, which gets an 89. And there we go. Good stuff. Then we have a quick squash as Monty Brown kills Tony Cozina in 109 by promote the pounce. Monty Brown gets a 56. Tony Cozina gets a 42. And yeah, just like quick boom squash, ouch, win. And then Monty celebrates with Jones at the TV Ray, which gets a 54. Then we go backstage where Barash is with uh, O'Hara and Palumbo. And unfortunately, yeah. Okay, so this only gets 73 mostly because it was short, but also because we had some bad rolls. Basically, like, you know, either men, uh, you know, are, are happy with their win, but, you know, they both know that they're the man to do it in that six man. And, it you know, it doesn't matter. You know, uh, you know, O'Hara and Palumbo already faced off. They faced off before in the ring and they'll do it again. But, you know, they're friends, but they're partners, but they both want to be at the top of this business. You know, and there's a little bit of tension in the seats, you know, but then they, you know, both on say, come on, we're, we're just messing with each other. We're, we're not going to break up over one single match. Don't worry about that. And that's, you know, in little fun, little baby face promo, which gets a 73. 
Then we have the next actual match, which is in a good four match, which only gets a 69. Nice. Uh, Skipper defeats Alex Wright in 854 by pinfall to overdrive. This gets a 69. Alex Wright gets a 77. The Skipper gets a 49, which, you know, you need to really build him up. And of course, if you think Alex Wright was pissed about doing the job here, yes, Alex Wright was pissed about doing the job here. But, you know, I'll do some um, off stage, giving him some money to make him happier. And then post match, basically, you know, Either the skipper is celebrating, Ray Jr. comes down, you know, Ray Cup basically says, you know, I'm glad to face him, you know, I have, have, have to have a great match at, uh, at Showdown of the Sun, and he says, you know, I'm a man, not some make-a-wish kid, Ray, so I don't need your pity. This Sunday is my shot at greatness after being in the shadows for so long, and I'm not going to fail. So he just sort of, like, you know, looks at Ray, and he walks away, and Ray's like, what the hell did I do? Uh, 58, because again, it isn't over yet, but you know, gotta build people up. Uh, then we have uh, Jeff Hardy's backstage, and out of nowhere, Kaz just attacks him, takes him out, like just kicks the hell out of him for for WCW to just run in. And you know Hardy's a little hurt. And but when we come back from commercial, that is officially announced for Sean Sean Son as well. As it looks like Kaz was paid off by the Helms Legacy, or more importantly Shane Helms, in order to take him out, despite the fact he's not even in the six way. I guess he was upset that Jeff Hardy got the win last week, or something weird. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, so yeah, this gets 68 perfectly solid angle. And then a uh, quick statement where Kill Kim is in Eric Bischoff's office. She basically says, you know, she deserves a title shot. And she says, Eric's like, well, I'm not sure about deserves, but you are a former champion. You got a pinfall over her, even though, like, you know, everybody can see it was kind of fishy. And Gil goes in the interview and like, like, I've talked to people who can, you know, do this more accurately than you can. So just take the world title the women's world title shot and be happy about it. Gilk is, everybody can remind who should be the head bitch in charge of this company when I'm done with so, Who got lucky? Lots of people seem to get lucky all the time here. And Eric sort of smirks at that as Gilk Kim walks away. 74, actually a really good promo for Gail. I mean, Bischoff, Bischoff probably helped, but still, solid promo for, for Gail. And then we have in a good match, Shane Douglas defeats Jason Jett in 838 by pinfall, only using her for leverage. But of course, as Shane Douglas, of course, it was the chain. He walloped Jason Jett with a chain. This gets an 82, which is shockingly good. Shane Douglas gets an 82. Jett gets a 63. As we build up uh, another match, which I, we could have done so last week officially, but I forgot to add it, as it's going to be Jason Jett and Paul London versus Jeff Jarrett and Shane Douglas uh, building off their gauntlet match at Starcade. So there we go. In the post match, of course, Jared and Douglas celebrate to a 71. And now it's main event time, which I hope is going to be. Oh no, one more segment as Awesome Insider continue to brawl backstage. And you know, uh, officials eventually break him up, up, but if officially the match is also announced right before the main event as it's Mike Awesome versus Scott Sider. If you're thinking I'm doing a lot of booking on the fly, uh, to build up matches real quickly because I'm only in three weeks. You're goddamn right I am. Uh, 71, good stuff. You know, not the end of the world that it built, lost heat because it was only three minutes, but what can you do? And then in our main event, which only got an 82, which is unfortunate. Uh, in a good match, Vampiro left stat to beat Los Guerreros in 1448. When Vampiro, it says pinned to Eddie Earl with using it for leverage, but, you know, basically he, he wallops him with a chair shot or something like that and gets the pinfall victory over the world champion. Um, as Lestat and Chavo brawl, this gets an 82, Eddie gets a 90, Chavo gets a 69, nice, Lestat gets a 68, and Pro gets an 84, and yeah, let's see here, what was on the dirt sheet, uh, Lone Marauf for Vampire and Lestat, and Poor, okay, so, yeah, not the end of the world, or anything. And post-match, we have a wild thing, as basically, Morningstar comes out, you know, sort of, maybe to lay, let Vampiro's fears of being his bitch little you know his his servant lie down a little bit as helps it with the beatdown but after a couple minutes of beatdown crowd pops huge as goldberg comes down to clear the ring and help eddie up as they're just down between goldberg and morningstar as they're both part of this big six man at showdown in the sun and of course vampire and eddie are facing off for the world title this gets an 88 to close things out and overall the show itself gets an 85 so again not our best show um but still a solid build up to the uh big world title uh big world title uh not feud uh big world title match uh big world title yeah big world title match at, at the big food. I don't know words are hard sometimes I promise that's the problem here uh we got some more AI hirings 
Worker skills, fun times, higher and higher. Okay. How do I light like sugar? Now, that's interesting that Casas, despite being really over in Mexico, hasn't been used in a match in over a Jesus. No, he got hmm, interesting. Like, yeah, he's been part of. Hmm, that's really interesting. Anyway. Um, let's see here, W, let's see what Raw did last week. Okay, so they got an 88, which is a little better, which is unfortunate. Um, so we had Jericho go over Nick Dinsmore, Chris Jackson Lee defeated Molly Holly, Jack Gaeta, Benoit and Quick and Sexy defeated Regal, Paul and Richards, Austin defeated Leviathan by DQ, DDP defeated Kevin Nash in a cage match, Big Show defeated Raven in 85, and Team Angle, Angle and Gun defeated Kaden. Okay. So not our best show, but, but, you know, not their best show either. Uh, mail wise, ooh, got some opinions. Eddie thinks Lean Cartier is turning a good worker. I agree. Chris Harris thinks Gokum is going to be a star. Okay. Terry Taylor thinks Winger Pop is going to be a star. A little less. Okay, Terry. And Johnny thinks she's a woman, John. She's not supposed to be that big. Sometimes I think, yeah, that, that's something like that game has to fix. Uh, so a couple like, uh, what's our I'm looking for here? Uh, a couple off-screen things, well, other company things that first, Osama Kido became the Booker of All Japan, so that's interesting. And also, I don't think I showed this last time, but uh, let's see here. New Japan had their uh, Tokyo Dome show, which I don't think I showed you guys last time. Uh, if, and if I did, just, you know, amuse me. So, for this, we had uh, Dejiro Masuti and Nigel McGuinness and Macho Pump. Yes, that's for a War Six Man defeated Renanua, Anro, and Mashino Mishino with a 69. Chris Hiro, Kenega Shin, and Zunui. Uh, defeated Flying Kid Ichiara, Super Demikin, and Tomitsuko Toba in the 68, and then we got off to the big matches. Asuma Nishimura defeated Kanemura in 81. Izuki Sasaki defeated Jinjin Shaki and Azuka in the 74. Magnum Tokyo and Silver King defeated Junior Stars, which I believe is, yeah, Koji Kanemato and Minoru Tadaka, and Jito and Gato for the Junior Heavyweight Tag Titles in 82. Don Fry defeated Nakanishi, which probably still has a match in the 71. Babiru defeated Tanahashi, defeated the Junior Heavyweight Title. Yes, Bobby Roode and Tanashi having a match in 2004. Interesting. Uh, Trono defeating Ken Shamrock in a 73. Hase defeating Ruji Nagata defeating the heavyweight title. Which, just the way, the way they're continuing to push Hase, who's, yeah, almost, what is he? Yeah, he's, I mean, he's not that old, actually. He's only 42. Thought he was older. Uh, but still, like, the young guns should be taken over by Hase Stella's title. And then main event, the bat team of Muto and Taokeya defeated Kintoji for the tag titles in a 94, which got 58,000 people in the Tokyo Dome. So interesting. Um, and if we look at some news, so let's see here. If we look at some signings they've done. So Vito Lograsso, which is interesting because we let him go. Lenny Lane, of all people. Akira Enzua, who's this guy? He was a young lion. Psycho, okay. Uh, Murakami, who's a former shooter type dude. And Yuji Hino, who, yeah, uh, was a K Dojo graduate. So interesting, like her, interesting hirings. Uh, yeah, let me just see if there's been any other interesting hirings, real quick, just to show you guys some news. Okay, so worker sightings outside of WCW. Let's see here. Or Orihara got signed by Dragon Gate. Um,. Yeah, New Dragon Gate hired a bunch of people. Ricky Shane Page, of all people, got hired by WWE. Salvador Tomaselli got hired by WWE uh, on a developmental contract. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Um, outside of people, I've hired for, like, uh, yeah, undercard stuff. Interesting. But yeah, um, again, to put over what's going on, next paper, of course, pay per view. Big show. Uh, first, in the main event, Eddie Guerrero will defend the WCW World Heavyweight title against Vampiro. In the big six-man, one-versus-one elimination match, determine the number one contender, Bill Goldberg will take on Canyon, Shane Helms, Morningstar, Sean O'Hare, and Chuck Palumbo. Billy Kibben and Lance Storm will make their first defense of the tag team titles against, of all people, Booker T and RVD. Gail Kim will get her revet chance another at the WCW Women's World title against Lee Cartier. Justin Liger will take on Jamie Noble for the world, for the Cruiserweight title. Jason Jett and Paul London will, will take on Jeff Jarrett and Shane Douglas. Kaz will take on Jeff Hardy. Mike Austin will take on Scott Steiner. Rick Jr. will defend the U.S. title against Elix Skipper. And, yeah. 
that's pretty much the show. Like, you know, not our biggest show uh, ever, but like, you know, she got to do this sort of in January, sort of rebuild things, set things up. I mean, Eddie Vamp in Mexico is a big match. The six man, uh, you know, main wacky uh, elimination match is going to be fun. And of course, well, it's not, it's not eliminations. I keep on forgetting that. Um, yeah, it's, it's not, it's not an elimination match. Where is it? Hold on. Yeah, it's, I keep on saying it's an elimination match, but it's an elimination match. It, it's, it's just a six man match to determine the number one contender for the first pinfall, I think. I'll have to double check what I did last year, because now I'm confused. Which, of course, looks, makes me look very smart. Regardless, it, it's a big show, um, and I'm looking forward to doing it. Uh, Storylines, Flair for the Old, which is just for Flair, 79. Opportunity is at an 81. Uh, Monty Brown is at a 50. Booker and RVD is at an 87. Cruiserweight Funds at a 59. Uh, build up for the six man is at a 79. Jonathan Toro is at a 48. Kaz and Jeff Hardy is at a 79. Eddie and Vamp is at an 85. Steiner versus Awesome is at an 80. Tag Gauntlet's at an 82. Tag Wars is at a 72. And the women's is at a 61 and 55, respectively. So, fun stuff. Uh, creative wise, again, franchise players, same franchise players. O'Hare, RVD, Goldberg, Steiner, and Pura, as far as who's hot. So, about who you'd expect. But yeah. Um, Really good stuff. You know, I, I really enjoy what I'm still doing with this series. Why I'm still doing it. Why I'm still doing it. What, uh, hell, um, 60, what, like 150? I know, because 2002, yeah, like almost what, hell, 170 odd episodes did. Regardless, however many episodes it is, you know, I, I've had a good time. Um, and I'm still enjoying this, so you'll keep on seeing this until I get tired of it. Regardless, this is it for now. So if you enjoyed this, go ahead and give it a like. Comment below what you're enjoying and not enjoying. And subscribe to this channel for probably too much DOE to 2020 content, but you got this series, my MLW 2005 series, my WW 1993 series, Noah Grishoff, and my just started WW 2013 series with lots of random uh, generated goals for me. But that's it for now, so you talk to you later, and adios. Have a good one.